should have paid more attention in uh, 70s math class. Metric didn't come in uh, in Ontario schools until 1980 or something like that. Um, and fuck metric anyway. I mean, it's just, it's better and more accurate, but for engines, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I, I, I'm not working on any European engines here, so in standard is the shit. I spent most of the morning trying to get my mind wrapped around this motherfucker. Uh, what makes this different than the um, than those telescoping bore gauges that I had before is that uh, really all I can do is measure the diff the, di the difference or a variance between this fixed width um, and plus or minus that. Mostly minus. But um, it means I had to use my shitty Mastercraft calipers to try and measure this as accurately as possible. What I really need is micrometer. Because once I know that what this distance is, then the dial tells you uh, how much um, how much difference. So earlier I kind of did a few of these and hold on and determined roughly so where that needle starts to go back that's kind of what we're at. So I think these are half thousandths whole numbers and the uh, the smaller ones are uh, five ten thousandths which is what it says here on the gauge so what that kind of means is um, the best measurement I could get out of this whole thing here is 3.425 inches the bores are advertised 3.4 when they're new this has a little bit of a, a you know a, variance to it but it looks to me got some parallax error going on there uh, one two two and a half and almost another two ten thousandths so that gets subtracted from the 3.425 so my best guess, my best reckoning, is that we're talking about this bore at this location anyway in the middle to be, um, well, just over two and a half thousandths off of four two five. So yeah, I mean that that still puts it at you know four two three or. Four to two and a half. So that's still twenty-two thousandths over the three point four advertised. Um, as has been the case with uh, trying to get measurements of these that are they're in some ass way accurate. Um, I think the, cal the, um, the calipers I have, the digital calipers, are not uh, necessarily giving me what I need to know. With this, you really need to know what the hell this is. Or you have no way to interpret the under over. So right now I'm going with the fact that this is about twenty-two thousandths over the three point four inches. I'm gonna look up whether that's you know a realistic thing for a fifty year old engine. I suppose it is. I mean twenty thousandths is usually what you would overbore. Um a cylinder in order to get it back round and everything else. Not sure I'll ever do that with this engine uh, unless I get some really screwy numbers once I get the handle on figuring this out. Um, I just don't think it needs it. But what it will do is probably give me the idea of which uh, piston rings I need to use if I don't have this board out. I'm, you know, you might I might have to get some uh, oversized pistons just do the wear here 
um, intuitively and just in doing all the measurements I've, nothing is standing out as being bizarre but I, I would like to be able to put a number on it which is what I've been trying to do for the last month or so um, so I'm gonna get some more experience with this and I'm gonna back up some of those theories but the best I have now and at least this is at least this is giving me some numbers that actually mean something as opposed to when I was trying to do it purely with those uh, shitty uh, bore gauges and with the calipers so but I think I will get something in this 3.4 3.5 um, I'll get some real uh, micrometer to make sure that that distance is good but of course that means going out and getting one of those and having to repeat this entire goddamn thing so anyway it's it's a learning experience no matter what and uh, I'll also take some measurements at uh, kind of a third round to see the uh, the actual round or out of round that this might be um, I got a couple of them a little bit earlier today but I hadn't quite got the, the dial effect going so um, And the last couple of numbers I got showed a uh, kind of a five ten thousandths uh, taper kind of thing. So it doesn't sound too extreme to me either. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna have to be another another video to get into this a little bit more detail. And uh, once I've got this mastered, I'll I'll run us through all of them and uh, get another spreadsheet going and decide what, uh, you know, what the hell is the up. Oh yeah, this one's uh, a little different. The other thing that was blowing my mind is um, initially I, I was thinking that this was adding to the dimension, but uh, it, it would only be anything left of the um, the dial that would be an increased size so I need to subtract the numbers I'm getting out of this um, from this. So that's an update for now. I hate the baby step thing. I would really like to know what I'm dealing with here. And uh, I also want to get on the parts ordering and uh, inventory of the stuff that we got and start to uh, order up some parts for this bitch back together. Turns out the 66 needs an engine, so I'll be starting this process over once uh, once we do that. Anyway, thanks all. Talk soon. Bye.